Hi and welcome back. This is part two of my video going from London City to Nice Côte d'Azur in the Embraer Phenom 300 Bizjet. We pick up again just over the foothills of the French Alps as I begin my descent and approach into Nice. Right, welcome back. As you can see, uh, we are flying over mountain country. Uh, this is, um, unless my geography is very much mistaken, the uh, French Alps. Contact Marseille Control. Uh, one, two, four, decimal, five. Good day. Okay, there's a hand one, over to Marseille. Five, eight, zero, zero, eight. And uh, fairly soon we'll get our descent instructions. Now, for whatever reason, uh, the Marseille controller always appears to be a German. Um, of course, Pro TCX doesn't really have uh, the world's best selection of voices. Uh, I've downloaded most of the extra voice packs that are available, and there are a bunch of old British voices, which is great uh, for flying in the UK. Uh, not so much for flying in France, as there don't appear to be any French voices, although there is French uh, background ATC. But anyway, uh, that, I believe, is the Alps. The bigger peaks are shrouded in clouds, so you can't see them, but there are some peaks over there with a bit of snow on, and we're flying uh, over the foothills. Uh, if I just come around, you see... Off to the right is the plane, and then around it a little bit further, and kind of behind us, uh, more mountains. So it's pretty spectacular country. And there is our descent. Right, let me get back in the cockpit. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to need to VS down. So I'm going to pull back on the speed and VS down at 2,000 feet per minute. We can descend at 280 knots, that's fine. Um, I'm actually going to get a little bit slower than that, I think. Give myself room, because you will creep up. And the last thing I want to do is suddenly find I'm flying at 310 knots and going to rip the wings off the aircraft. Um, so this uh, is the, the France VFR scenery, as I was mentioning. The whole of France uh, has been, although you haven't seen much of it. Um, I think I, I intercut some shots of Paris as we passed by. Center. Um, you, um, good day. So you get an idea of the Would kind of quality uh, of the scenery. Zero. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the purchase. It wasn't particularly costly. Uh, I would definitely recommend it to anybody looking for uh, VFR level French scenery or just French scenery in general. We um, are between intersection uh, Beppe and Retno. Uh, and at Retno, uh, we will make a very slight left turn and head to Paris. Paris, we're making a big right turn in that general direction, uh, and that will get us away from the mountains because otherwise we would be perilously close uh, given the descent we're about to get. And we'll get a step descent right the way down to 7,500, which is what we'll start the approach at, uh, and then we'll come down, I think, to 3,500. That's what normally happens. Um, and from there we'll begin our approach, and I'll talk about the approach when we get there. But uh, in the meantime, let's have a chat about Microsoft Flight Simulator. And when I say a chat, I mean I'm going to talk and you're going to listen, or not. Um, your choice. <laughs> you could always fast forward the video. Um, but if you haven't been hiding under a rock for the last few months, and you are at all interested in flight simulation, then you will know that Microsoft has announced that it's getting back into the flight simulation business, which was a surprise to an awful lot of us given they exited uh, the FSX space in uh, 2010, so that's nine years ago. And we assumed, especially when they sold the commercial license to Lockheed Martin to eventually produce Prepared, and then the entertainment license to Dovetail Games, whose uh, aborted flights and world product uh, was quite promising, uh, but ultimately didn't make it. Um, I guess we all thought they were done. And we remembered Microsoft Flight, which was a bit of a disaster because, let's be honest, it was a game. Uh, and it was really aimed at, at gamers and not really at hardcore simmers. Which is a shame, as it actually did feature some um, interesting improvements to the core engine. Um, 
But we know we know that Microsoft will have access to obviously all of that code, um, and we'll be able to use it in the new product. But most people assumed, uh, having heard the announcement that Microsoft were getting back into the Flight Sim series, that they were going to build yet another game intended um, for well, consoleers basically, and you know, no uh, no disintended people playing on consoles. But that's not where you would have a flight simulator. Uh, and they did say that this um, upcoming um, flight simulator will be available on Xbox eventually, uh, but it is PC first. And they announced it during the Xbox Live presentation. Now, of course, Xbox is now the the uh, overall branding for Microsoft's gaming studios altogether, um, so that shouldn't have been that much of a surprise. But they announced it at E3, which again is a, is a gaming and console show, not really a flight sim event. And there were flights of events around there that they could have announced that, but I believe that was down to Microsoft Corporate. Anyway, they were very quick to come out and say, no, no, not true, uh, we are building a simulator, this is a, a sequel to FSX, it really is a simulator, it's really intended for simmers. Yes, we want to make it open and available to less experienced people and more casual people, but it will be a simulation for the hardcore users which of course is music to everybody's ears. But nonetheless, the doubts persisted, and I don't blame people for having doubts, but Microsoft showed off the new simulator in uh, well, a video presentation at E3 to begin with, and then with screenshots and other videos that they posted on their website later. And they're nothing short of stunning. They really aren't. People were picking them apart and saying, if, if this is real sim footage, if it really, really is, then this sim could do things that no other sim can. And it appears that, yes, it was all real footage, and we've now seen quite a lot more. So uh, Microsoft held an event in the middle of September uh, under NDA, which is why we didn't hear about it until early October, uh, with all of the, the major uh, flight sim vloggers, YouTubers, uh, some of the, the flight sim media and other interested buys, uh, a few real-world aviation vloggers as well who dabble in simulation. And they took them along to Seattle, and they sat them down with the developers of, of the, the product, and let them interview them one-on-one, -on -one and had a press conference, and then gave them uh, a, their own individual machine loaded with a, an alpha copy of the software, and gave them three hours to play with it. So, you know, this is not uh, Microsoft trying to steer the story. They were giving people full and open access to what they had done. The only proviso was they couldn't actually take any footage of the version they were using. Microsoft supplied them with B-Roll, uh, which you probably will have seen by now. It's in all the, the YouTube videos and easily accessible on the web. But, you know, have a look at it and it looks very exciting. And so we know it's built on FSX, so it's still the same core technology, so it should be nicely backwards compatible. They've said there will be a legacy mode to let you use older add-ons. Um, but then they've pushed ahead and rewritten a great deal of the code, 64-bit of course. Um, Flight level 100. Okay, 100. Flight level 100. Right. We're making our turn at Paris now. So we're turning away from the mountains and towards the plane. Um, so it appears that Microsoft have concentrated on three main areas for now. And they've said that the, uh, the first version of the new flight simulator will not have all the features everybody wants, and it will, it will not have all the features even the FSX has had in the past because of the amount of work they've had to do. So there won't be any helicopters, for example. Uh, there was even a suggestion there might not be anything in the way of ATC. Um, VR is a question mark, although the community has come out very loudly saying, we want VR. Yeah, um, that's the number one request. Sending to fly them to zero, zero, it's four, even one, been two. suggested that um, out of the box, the new sim might not even support multiple outside views, which of course would, would make it um, useless for me, unless Microsoft has improved the rendering engine to be able to generate a single view of 180 degrees um, with proper perspective, which I very much doubt they have. Uh, so it may well be that the, uh, the simulation, initially when it's released, isn't, isn't relevant for um, cockpit builders like me, who need to go that, that extra distance. Just pulling back my power because I'm actually overspeeding the time a little bit. Don't think we're in the danger zone yet. Uh, nothing bad has started to happen. The aircraft still handling fine. But then this is a Carinado uh, airplane, so 
let's be honest, it's not study level. I'm not dissing Carinado. I mean, it sounds like I am, but I'm really not. They make good airplanes that look fantastic. Um, but, you know, they, they're, they're really meant for the more casual simmer, I think, who wants lots of airplanes rather than the person who's looking to study one particular aircraft in detail, which is great for me because that's exactly what I am. Um, so Microsoft have worked on three main areas. They've worked on the scenery, they've worked on the aerodynamics, and they've worked on the weather. And if you've seen the footage, then you'll know how good the scenery looks. And this is all down to the use of uh, data from Bing. So Microsoft, like Google, owns a big set of geodata. They own satellite photography and aerial photography of pretty much the whole world. They own uh, terrain information for pretty much the whole world. And they also have a ton of photogrammetry data, uh, which is the photographs taken of buildings and structures in built-up areas that allow you to synthesize a 3D view from lots of photographic views. So they have photos of all the big city centers and they can create 3D versions of all the buildings there. Um, and combine that with procedural generation techniques that takes all this data and stitches it into a seamless view. Um, and it stitches all this stuff together um, and fills in the gaps where there are gaps and gives you a very, very realistic looking landscape. Uh, right down to the fact that you know individual blades of grass are modeled. So um, grassy areas are not textures, they are 3D objects. Okay, so that is the clearance I was expecting. Alright, I'm just going to program that in. So the approach is RNAV22 right delta vectors load. So it's in the, uh, the flight plan now. Um, but they're able, they've, they've created an environment they say basically you can do VFR anywhere in the world now. Because where the landmarks should be, they are. And I quite believe them looking at it, I really do. It's uh, you know, I mean, this is nice scenery we're flying through, but this is not a patch on what Microsoft is going to give us. And the density they've been able to achieve of buildings in built-up areas without apparently any great impact on frames suggests they've done something pretty miraculous with the rendering engine. Um, you know, it's uh, and, and we've seen footage from many different places now. It, you know, it's not a con job. It can't be. Uh, so it, that in itself is pretty spectacular. Then they've improved the aerodynamics of the aircraft. So instead of being a single surface affected globally, aircraft are now made up of anything up to a thousand different aerodynamic surfaces, each of which is individually affected by uh, the airflow. All of that's calculated in real time. There's no more lookup tables. It's not flying on rails. You can do things in this sim that you can't do in any other sim. I think not even X-Plane with the blade element theory. Uh, I'm not sure I'm not an X-Plane user, so I couldn't say for certain. But I don't think, for example, X-Plane allows you to do a wing stall. Whereas this new simulator will let you do a wing stall. You can stall the tip of a wing um, and begin the stall at that point, and you can do proper spins. You should be able to do aer aerobatics uh, in the aircraft if you have the right kind of aircraft, of course. Um, so the aerodynamics has been massively improved. And then the weather, and the weather is maybe the most miraculous transformation of all. Um, so the weather is all vol volumetric now. The clouds are volumetric, the rain is volumetric. All the weather effects, uh, the wind uh, affects cloud formation, clouds that evolve over time. Uh, you know, you can have multiple cloud layers, they affect each other. The terrain, the temperature, it all affects the weather model. Weather evolves the way it should do in the real world. And uh, you can set your own weather themes, of course, but then you can also uh, uh, use uh, live weather, which they'll supply. Uh, and I guess you'll be able to do historical weather and weather themes and, and so on and so forth. So, that's looking Bravo, pretty good. Romeo, Tango, zero, zero, eight, turn left, heading one, three, zero. Left turn to heading one, three, zero. Okay, we're getting vectored. Zero, zero, eight. Normally happens at this point. So, switch to heading mode. And let's turn to one, three, zero. So, you've seen footage in some of the trailers of uh, thunderstorms and uh, other kinds of extreme weather. And it, it does look pretty amazing. Uh, and all in all, I'm I'm feeling very positive about this whole thing. Now, as I said, whether it will be useful for cockpit builders out the uh, out the gate, I don't know, because to be honest, uh, we'll probably need something like FSUIPC to interface 
hardware and other bits of software. Um, given it's built on FSX under the hood, uh, and uh, given that SIM Connect will still be in the SIM, we've been told, although it will be uh, heavily extended, um, I'm imagining that, that Pete Dowson could do FS UIPC for uh, MSFS uh, 2020, which is what people seem to be calling it at the moment, if, uh, if he wanted to, and I dare say Microsoft will reach out and ask if he wants to, because that would provide a, a straightforward route to make existing stuff compatible. Um, and you'd be able to interface your hardware properly, uh, and other things, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd need something like SPAD Next for MSFS, so you need to find out if, if uh, the SPAD Next people are thinking about doing that. Um, and uh, at the very least, I would need the ability to do multiple outside views uh, in order to generate the outside view I have here. And really, I would need uh, something like uh, wide view in order to create a multi-channel environment. I think it's very unlikely that Microsoft will put multi-channel features into this product. Uh, even though Lockheed has them in prepared, uh, that's not the market that Microsoft is targeting with the simulator. It is an entertainment product. Of course, whether, whether Lockheed will want to buy that tech from Microsoft for the future of prepared, we don't know. But I find it um, very difficult to see how Lockheed would hold on to a lot of current users of prepared, non-commercial users, that is to say, um, when this new SIP is available, it's just, you know, it's better all round for, uh, for people training, for individuals training, uh, probably for, you know, small flight schools. Um, it's only really when you get into the realms of, of proper simulator projects that you would need something like prepared. And uh, if, if the market fills the gap around uh, MSFS, then um, it should be entirely usable for simulators. Romeo, Tango, zero, zero, eight. Turn left heading one one five. Left turn to heading So the one, short answer five, is I, I will be um, I will be putting it in my simulator as soon as I can, as soon as it's uh, usable. But I don't know when that's going to be, and it probably won't be when it's first released. Um, it probably isn't going to be released until I think the back end of next year. I mean they say twenty twenty, but I think it's gonna be the very back end of twenty twenty. There's clearly a lot of work still to be done. Uh, now there is an insider program which I have joined. And there is a uh, tech alpha program, a preview program coming up, which I have registered for. Um, and uh, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to actually discuss whether I've been accepted or not, because there is an NDA attached to it. Uh, but suffice it to say, if I had been accepted, then I would be looking forward to getting my hands on, uh, on that alpha software, trying it with my SIM hardware and seeing exactly what it can and can't do at this point. Um, but it is obviously super, super early days yet. But I do think this is going to be very disruptive. Um, I think quite a lot of add-on manufacturers must be thinking, what am I doing now? Uh, if you're a scenery company like Orbex, for example, primarily, um, why are people want to go buy, going to want to buy, sorry, uh, scenery packs when they already have the entire Earth replicated in excruciating detail as it really is? I just don't see why you'd want to. So that market is just going to disappear. And of course, Orbex makes good airports and other add-ons, so it's not like they uh, would lose their business. And they're they're working on X-Plane. I imagine they'll continue to work on X-Plane, assuming the X-Plane guys don't try and go down a similar sort of route in terms of procedurally generated world. Uh, but I see X-Plane losing a lot of users because of this. And uh, you know, I think a lot of add-on. Uh, manufacturers are going to be nervous, and rightly so. Most recently, just this week, we've heard PMDG come out and announce that they are basically retooling their strategy around Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, that they are stopping development for X-Plane. Any experimentation they were doing has stopped, and uh, they are not going to develop new stuff for prepared V4, at least for now. doesn't mean they won't release anything. Obviously, they'll, they'll keep maintaining what they've got, and they did manage to spring the... 737NGUX uh, or XU or something, I can't remember exactly what the number was, uh, on the community, which everybody was very surprised about, having said that they would not be uh, releasing NG3 for prepared. Then they clarified and said NG3 will be an MSFS only product, uh, whereas the, the NGXU um, is out for prepared now and will continue to be supported. But they are strategically deciding to plumb all their weight behind Microsoft Flight Simulator. So they have clearly uh, 
gone away and talked to the development team and got the information they need to satisfy themselves that this is the future platform for them. And the truth is, it's probably the future platform for everybody watching this video. Um, it's, it's, it's dramatic. Turn left heading 040, descend and maintain 3500 QNH 1013. Left turn to heading 040, descend into 3500 QNH 1013, BRT 008. Right, let's uh, continue our descent. And we're turning in the general direction of these now. Delta four one two. Roger. Descent and maintain. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to get cleared. Delta uh, Direct to Sotox, which is um, an on our waypoint on the way towards the approach. Uh, when we get to Sotox, we will then transition onto the approach line um, and head via Nanax towards the uh, the approach FN uh, uh, the FF final approach fixed point FN 22D and then it's on to MN 22D uh, at MN 22D we need to be at 1260 feet maximum and then uh, we actually transition off IFR and onto VFR and we have to complete the landing VFR so this is the uh, interesting thing about the 22 runways is that uh, they are uh, part visual approach. Now, basically, we'll head uh, north towards, uh, well, not north northeast really, towards um, uh, FM 22D or Bravo, Romeo, Tango, whatever its zero, actual zero, name is, MN 22D, right, sorry. Zero, eight, five. Resume on navigation to Sierra Oscar there Tango, we go. Oscar X ray. Right turn to heading 085. Continue our navigation to SOTOXBRT008. Just realigning my projectors there, because they got very slightly out of alignment. Um, so we'll, we'll head straight at MN22D uh, going towards the land. We'll be out over the sea at this point. And. Uh, Giving it a little bit more beans. I'm trying to manage the speed around 250 knots. And uh, we will then do a looping turn, looping turn, swooping turn, sweeping turn, uh, wide turn, shall we say, around the bay uh, on the other side of which is the airport. And uh, you've got to get that right to be aligned with the runway. And I have frequently overshot and ended up well, uh, well wide of the runway. Now, if you do it quickly enough, you can rescue that uh, but it is not a given um, so that's probably going to be the more interesting part of the approach see if we manage that down there is Cannes Airport there's a you probably see a beacon down there uh, that is Cannes Airport so uh, that would be our alternate if Nice were closed uh, but then having said that if Nice were closed for weather for example chances are Cannes would be too and we'd have to go a bit, bit further afield maybe uh, Montpellier or something like that or Marseille um, but just as a direct alternate, because you know Nice is too busy, or the runway's closed, or whatever, we would go to Can just over there. Um, all right, we are heading out off the coast and over the sea. We've avoided being vectored out um, significantly. I have actually been taken on a bit of the tour of the Mediterranean to get around traffic, uh, but we uh, we do seem to have fairly light traffic at the moment. That I'm not seeing any. I'm seeing a bit. Need to zoom in. Yeah, there is some. Air China, Delta, EasyJet, um, and a couple that I don't recognise. All right, I'm going to uh, stick direct Sotox into the G1000. Now remember, you can put in a direct destination and override the flight plan temporarily, and then go back onto the flight plan later. That's what I'm going to do just so I know when I'm reaching Sotox. And then I can go off heading and back onto nav mode. Gotta keep your eye on it to make sure you don't overshoot. Also gotta keep an eye on the vertical track. Uh, once I get onto the approach I'll enable the VNAV 
uh, and that will help me descend but um, often the vertical track gets lost uh, when you're on the final leg and uh, you have to notice that and either correct manually or, or switch uh, out of VNAV when you're actually on the descent and manage it all manually. Um, I've again fluffed that a few times. But let me activate that and switch to nav mode and the aircraft will fly direct to SOTOX. If, you, if I just increase the uh, the map range you can see SOTOX there. And then just along to the right of it there's another track uh, and if you look up and just to the left you can see FN22D FAF so that's the track we're going to end up on uh, that will be an arrival from the south normally so when we get to SOTOX we'll go past SOTOX ask for direct NANAX uh, and then get on to that approach and that'll get, get us where we want to be right so I'm just going to a little bit more power I want to be at 250 knots, not 242. Otherwise, ATC will just tell me to do that. Uh, right. Let's have a look. Uh, windshield heating should be on. Uh, should have been already, actually. Uh, okay, pressurization check, LFE. Yeah, we're good because we are basically at sea level here. Uh, icing conditions verify there are none, landing speed set, we can't do that in this aircraft, altimeters, set and cross check. Now he hasn't actually given me the Q&H uh, locally, but I can go and get the ATIS. So let me go back to COM1. Uh, now if you, with Active Sky, if you tune to uh, 122, you get the ATIS. If you tune to 122.02, you get the ATIS of your destination. So if I switch in COM1, we should be able to have a listen to that. Let's try. No, doesn't seem to want to work. What if 1220 uh, one, works? Let's just see. Lima Fox Trabite, November, Airport there we go. Golf zero four zero zero Zulu weather wind calm visibility one zero thousand sky clear temperature two three two point two zero Q and H one zero one three five zero one zero one three Golf Bravo Romeo Tango zero zero eight speed two two five zero speed two five zero B R T zero zero eight Okay, so I'm actually slightly under my assigned altitude at that Q and H, so I'm just going to let the aircraft climb a little bit back. Delta four one two, descend and maintain flight level one six zero. Descending to flight level one six zero, Delta four one two. All right, I'm going to tell the passengers uh, to belt up. There we go. Checklist is complete until before landing. Uh, our VREF today should be uh, well. Landing flaps three would be 111 knots. Easy a three four nine tower on one one eight decimal seven going to one one eight decimal seven. Easy so eight, three, four, nine. let's say 111 knots. Now, other than the haze, you can see the weather is clear. I'm going to turn the weather radar off now, so I don't forget on the way down. Also, no, I didn't actually load my flight plan into uh, Active Sky. Don't really matter. Just uh, that's the reason why the destination um, radio frequency wasn't working. If you don't have, the, if it doesn't have the flight plan, it doesn't know which ATIS to give you. Uh, so I wondered why, but it's just I forgot to do that. All right, we are getting quite close to Sotox. Let's have a look. Uh, we are at yeah 1.7 miles. I'm going to ask to clear to Nanax. Uh, no, come on. Other requests. No. Seriously? No, he is not. Oh, I actually have. I think I might know why. 
Uh, let's try that again. Other requests. No. He's not letting me uh, uh, get cleared to Nanax. Alright, we've passed Sotox. I'm going to steer in the right general direction anyway. So I'm going to activate uh, the approach procedure. I would get the instruction to do this fairly soon anyway, but I don't want to uh, don't want to miss the turn. Yes, I know that's slightly naughty of me, but Pro ATCX is not functioning the way it should do, so um, I feel safe to ignore. Just got to bleed off a little bit of speed as I let myself speed up a little bit too much. Romeo Tango there we go. Zero, zero, eight, turn left heading 310 speed to 200. Zero, zero. Left turn to heading 310 zero, zero, speed 200. Zero, zero, because of my speed, he often leaves that call a bit too late, which is why uh, I started a little bit early. Uh, I'm probably going to come around to a little bit left of what he wanted, but uh, I need to, to get on course. I am going to go uh, flaps one. Uh, can't see a lot. You can see the main the the headland over there. Um, things will get a little bit um, easier as we get closer. The uh, the bay we're going to turn around is just kind of here, and the airport is just over there. I'm going to put the landing lights on because it is a little bit foggy and misty. Bravo Romeo Tango zero zero eight descent and maintain clear final approach contact tower at the marker frequency is one one eight decimal seven. Send into clear approach tower at the marker one one eight decimal seven B R T zero zero eight. All right, there's our clearance. I've engaged the V path, so uh, the aircraft will start to descend. I've got to keep my eye on it and make sure uh, it isn't doesn't get lost. It will get lost eventually, um, and we'll need to continue that descent manually to make sure we're at the right point. Right, before landing, checklist, landing gear down three green, flap set for landing. Your damper off, uh, so we're not quite ready for any of that yet. So you just see some land ahead. Once we pass uh, that promontory is when we start to make our turn. But then we'll have good visual contact with the airport. Right, vertical track is coming down to meet us. And we are at 3,000 feet. Track. There you go. The aircraft is continuing to descend. Let's put the, uh, the altitude bug down to zero so that it's got the range it needs. And I'm going to slow down a bit more. And I need to get ready to take over manually. There's the bay ahead of us. All right, let's go flap two. Okay, vertical track is a bit below us. We have passed FN22D. We're on our way to MN22D. MN22D, we need to be at 1,260 feet. That is the target altitude. Higher than that, and we'll have a little bit of a steep descent to deal with, which I'd rather not do. Just discovering that um, a keypad I put in place this morning is kind of fouling on my knee a bit, so I guess that's going to be fun. Uh, right, 1800. Gonna go gear down and flaps Check three. Gear. Check gear. It's going to moan at me Check until the gear, gear is down. Check gear. Final approach speed is going to be 140 knots. 
we're getting down towards that now. 16, 20 feet. We might actually ride the vertical track all the way this time. Let's find out. We're nearly at MN22D. So I'm going to switch off the autopilot. Airport's off to our left there. Everything looks good for landing right now. And we'll be contacting the tower very shortly. Right, once this promontory is just out my left window, that's when I should begin my turn. Not doesn't have to be the fastest turn. Yeah, hit by a bit of wind there. Here we go, promontory is out the lift window now. So let's start that turn. Nice and gentle to begin with. And then we'll put a little bit of rudder in because I don't want to turn out too early. Tower, BRT, yeah, a little bit too much at the moment. Final, runway two, two, right. British, zero, zero, eight, flaps four. Slow two. Final approach speed, QNH, 1013, clear to land, runway 22 right. Final approach speed, QNH, 1013, clear to land, runway 22 right, BRT, 008. Happy lights telling me I'm just about on glide slope. Possibly a little bit high. Yeah, almost certainly a little bit high at this point. Yep, too high, but that's alright. We've got time to correct. Also, as you can see, I went a little bit too far. I'm just going to correct now. 500. Yeah, I'm going to go a bit long at this rate. Alright. Gone to idle thrust. There we go. the nose up a little bit. Try and get back on the runway centre line before we align ourselves. There we go. Oof. Little bit of a bounce on landing. I think I touched down one wheel first. But you know what? British. Not zero, the worst zero, landing I've ever made. Gate is right. Contact ground control on one two one decimal seven seven. One two one decimal seven seven. I can come off of this exit, which is unusual. See my projectors have definitely gotten a bit out of alignment here. Let's just get off the runway. Flaps up, strobe light off, landing light off. And we'll stop here. And I'm gonna ask for my taxi. Grumpy RT008 is cleared off the runway. Request taxi for parking. RT008. Taxi via Sierra to Terminal 1, Gate Charlie 48. Via Sierra to Terminal 1, Gate Charlie 48, BRT 008. Sorry about this for a second. That'll have to do for now. Projectors do get out of alignment. Right, so Gate is Charlie 48. Uh, right, sorry, I was going to attempt to use GSX for parking on this machine, but it's saying it can't find a valid AFCAD. Uh, and I think, I just updated my GSX earlier, I think my update may have broken it. So, uh, never mind. I know where uh, Charlie 48 is anyway. So, uh, we're going to follow Uniform off to the left here. And we'll just have to park the old fashioned way by eyeballing it. Ground Lufthansa 1069er, request taxi. Lufthansa 1069er, taxi via Tango Alpha Victor Alpha 322, runway 04 right. Via Tango Alpha Victor Alpha 322, to runway 04 right. Lufthansa 1069er.
Anyway, welcome to Nice. This, as I said earlier, is Just Sims uh, Nice Côte d'Azur Airport, and very nice it is too. This is also a PBR airport. Uh, I'm not sure it's as PBR as London Denver, City, but it's Denver. it's Denver. fairly Denver. PBR. Okay, this is not our turning. Our turning is the next turning. And we've got almost 30 knots of ground speed, so we're going to want to slow down a little bit. I do find differential braking a bit of a pain uh, with these rudder pedals, I have to say. I uh, braking both brakes at the same time so as not to uh, end up changing my direction is proving to be quite hard. Hence my uh, navigation is not as good as it should be. Also, my central view here is a little bit fuzzy because of the projector misalignment. Uh, that happens, by the way, because of the lens assembly heating up. So they were dead in alignment to begin with. Uh, they're not anymore. Here is my parking place, 48 Charlie. Try and get dead on if I can. I usually stop a little bit too early here. stop there. I reckon that's about right. Alright then, parking brake going on. And engine one shut down. Engine two shut down. Flight director can go off. Uh, nav lights go off. Beacon light will have gone off automatically with the engine. Uh, Peter heat can go off. Flaps are retracted. Uh, just dismiss that warning. We'll connect the ground power unit. Welcome to Nice. Nice day here. The mist is burning off now. It should be a nice sunny midsummer day. Uh, so my passengers okay. get to enjoy uh, their whatever they have, villa or whatever. Um, oh. I see that aircraft has decided to park uh, all the way forward. Now that hasn't been happening before. I'm wondering if my uh, look at yeah, look at all of them. They're all parked way too far forward. Wow. Yeah, something's clearly happened to the Afghan here. I think that the um, the GSX update has broken Afghans. That's annoying. It means I'm probably gonna have to reinstall all these airports. Um, I'll work out what happened and I'll deal with it in time for the next flight. Um, in the meantime, just ignore all these aircrafts. I'm going to open the door for my passengers and I'm going to tell them that they can now move. And uh, yeah, good successful conclusion to the flight. So uh, let's just go windshield heaters off, ELT off, hydraulic pumps off, uh, fuel pumps off. Uh, the right click thing again is just very tedious. Oh, for God's sake. Right. Uh, turn off the bleed valves. Uh, and yeah, that's actually good. Emergency lights to Ground off. Turn off the cockpit lights. Uh, we can turn off the panel lights. Uh, although you're not seeing that on this aircraft because uh, those things aren't synchronized by wide view. Uh, and let's just pop outside. Have a look. Here's our parking position. Now, obviously, this is uh, a spot made for airliners uh, rather than. Uh, oh, that's interesting. What's happened here? Ah, 
There you go. Okay, those aircraft you can see shouldn't have been there. Uh, that was the local copy of Ultimate Traffic Live on the client machine. I have to run it in order for the AI traffic to function properly, but then I've got to turn off the aircraft, otherwise you have a duplicate set of AI aircraft. Um, and I, I turned it off and on on the way in um, as part of what I was doing with GSX and uh, obviously didn't turn it off again so forget about those aircraft they were never there right um, but you can see yeah that's not bad I, I, can, I can live with that as parking I have to say completely inappropriate stand for me I did promise myself I would uh, set up the flight plan in Pro ATCX and actually dictate the stand and go to uh, a proper, you know, just a, a parking spot, which would have been better. But never mind. At least we get to look at the lovely uh, transparent jetways. Uh, I don't know if they're animated or not. You can't use the jetway with this aircraft. It's just too low, and it would be silly to try to do it anyway. So I'm not even going to bother trying, even if GSX were working, which it currently is not. Um, so, oh, and then you can see the uh, the AI traffic is landing and departing. Runway 04, not runway 22, despite the wind being that way. So uh, we did quite well actually not to run into something taking off in the opposite direction to us. That's a perennial problem with uh, FSX P3D, which I guess everybody is aware of. Um, well, if you stuck with me all the way through the video, thank you. Hopefully I've been able to edit this down to a little bit shorter than my usual. And if, if I have, then this may be a one part video. If not, and it's the end of part two. Thank you very much for sticking with me the whole way. Um, I do intend to do a lot more videos soon. Now that, well, for one thing, I've changed jobs, so I won't be out of the country anywhere near as much as I used to be. I'll be able to use the sim. And for uh, for, for a second, uh, I've actually ironed out most of the bugs, although I seem to have encountered a couple more today. Um, and now that I've finally got this video in the can, which I've been trying to make for weeks and weeks and weeks, I can move on and uh, do something else. If, if you do want to know when I publish a new video, obviously hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and you'll get an email when I do. Um, and uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, uh, or even just mildly disliked it, give it a thumbs down. That's fine. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. If you've got any suggestions, ideas for destinations, for aircraft, uh, or indeed just tell me what you think I'm doing wrong. Uh, all comments are appreciated uh, and very welcome. So, uh, in the meantime, from uh, Nice on a sunny June morning, uh, thank you for your time, thank you for sticking with me, and I hope to see you uh, back on the channel very soon.